This interview made me think of so many different sci-fi properties. I mean, you got Dune, Waterworld, uh, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, a lot of Asimov writings, uh, Southland Tales. You see that movie? No. It was garbage. Okay. <laughs> One of the worst movies I've seen. I don't recommend and it. And that comes Stars from you. If that comes from you. Who You have like a very quirky taste in movies. The last movie that we all watched together was... Thermi Romai. Hey, that was great. Um, I'm just saying you have a quirky taste in yeah, movies. Yeah. Remember when Matt and I just quit during Happiness of the Catacuries? That was your failing. <laughs> um, we, we did we did finish watching The Room together. And yeah, but I that, remember, that was actually, I'm glad that, that I, I went through that. But I remember our friend Thomas, like after The Room was over, he just like got up and left The Room. <laughs> yeah, Southland <laughs> he, he Tales. He didn't just leave a room, he left The Room. Okay, okay. The, the Room. Yeah, Southland Tales is just, it's just unwatchably bad. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like uh, Justin worse Timberlake than, is in it, but like they give him a big ugly scar. Worse the Rock than, is in it. What was the one with Sean Connery? Zardoz? Yes. Wait, doesn't that movie take place in 2023? Zardoz? The one with Sean Connery wears that like singlet. Does right? it? I don't know. Yeah. Well, that could be the world we're living in. No, be. I don't think so. It can't because Sean Connery has unfortunately passed away. Well, there are some lessons from that movie that are... Still relevant today. Things I won't say on this podcast. Yeah, no, you better I, not. I have not watched anything from that except like a clip you sent me of like a mountain that like belches guns or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a flying head rock. Yes, okay. Obviously. Uh. Um, man, I the real world is so much more depressing. <laughs> uh yeah, this is this is crazy. Like there's there's it's like uh, just an it's a Gordian knot of trouble. So you just have to slice through it? There's probably some kind of solution like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it did make me realize how screwed Chinese manufacturing is, like in the, in the much nearer term than I was thinking, you know? Yeah. But I mean, yeah, like how it affects power production and agriculture. Like there's just so many things that are... are tied up to this it's like how do you get around that? right so but but china loses manufacturing and then it loses money and it loses the money to solve the problems that it needs to solve so like even if because the ccp is actually really really skilled at coming up with short-term solutions to solve acute problems right i mean they've held off the real estate collapse for decades now yeah and you know they hold off the manufacturing or the they hold off the the water shortage crisis by rationing manufacturing, right? And they can also ration power when they need to ration water. So they can, but so, but like at a certain point, but like, I just never know what that point is because they always figure out, like, I'm, I'm always surprised and, and kind of impressed. Like there's always some way, often a horrible way that they're able to just like kick that can a little further down the road. Yeah, I wonder though, right now is like a very bad time for this all to be happening because uh, of like how badly zero COVID has wrecked the economy. I was going to say, like, we went through this entire podcast talking about all the horrible things that are plaguing China right now, and none of them was COVID. Huh. But I mean, yeah, even the fact that they decided to just do the kind of like letter rip thing with COVID, that they're still having economic issues because a lot of factories are like partially shut because there's just nobody to work because everybody's sick. Uh, and it's not something that's going to necessarily solve itself in like two days, right? And it just kind of further emphasizes like how bad the advice is to invest in China, whether it's BlackRock saying triple your investment or uh, that, that article we just did this past weekend that was saying like, oh, the moral thing to do is to continue to invest in China. Well, you, don't want, will be uh, you don't want yeah, China to collapse, right? No. You know? that's, but that's the thing, though, uh, Matt, like what you were talking about is like how the CCP manages to always kick the can a little further down the road is because they have a lot of this foreign money. Right. Uh, and so, like, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of things like, oh, you know, like all these foreign companies like Merrill Lynch can open a mutual fund in China now and BlackRock can do this and that because they need to get the investment in. Right. Well, I mean, and their solution to COVID is a good example of this, right? So, like, 
take how China handled COVID versus a country like, um, like you know, Nigeria, right? Like Nigeria had very minimal measures to deal with COVID. And they just recognize that like, we don't have a lot of resources. It's gonna happen, you know, encourage masks, get vaccines from the West where we can. And that's just how it is. Do Whereas, I just need to check. Are, do you specifically know how Nigeria handled it or are you guessing? I could have sworn I read an article about it in 2020. Okay. Uh, that's that's good enough fact checking. Yeah, that's that's good. I, I read it on the internet somewhere. Okay. But but uh, here's the point. But but what China decided to do, right, is, is, oh, we don't want the problems associated with COVID, such as, uh, you know, the, the hospitals being crowded or the manufacturing being shut down. And therefore, we're going to have zero COVID. And they put an incredible amount of resources into something that is, uh, I would say not like a not an actual productive use, right? Like like mass testing and quarantine centers are not actually producing I goods mean, in the economy. They are the producing GDP. They are right, but it's it's not productive in the way that building that that manufacturing is typically productive, right? And so so because of the resources, they they kicked the COVID can down the road down the road for three years. But they also did a lot of manufacturing around COVID. Masks, those full body PPE suits that oh, yeah. Abu Dhabi were wearing. Like, right, and they were used domestically. Kits, and they like, were used, you know, here, even even when the earlier in, in uh, 2021 or 2022, when the, the US government was like, we'll buy testing kits. We'll, we'll send them to your home if you need a testing kit. And so some large percentage of those uh, ended up being manufactured in China for American consumption. Yep. yep. So it was actually a good can to kick further down the road. It's just that they're, they're now dealing with the fallout from that. And they don't have the money to fix that fallout necessarily if they lose the manufacturing. Unless BlackRock triples their investment. Yes. Well, I think there is a solution to this problem. I, I was telling you earlier, I saw on Twitter... It was Twitter. Some some scientists saying that in the universe, uh, the largest reservoirs of water is actually surrounding black holes, and if anything, if anything, we can say that uh, black holes have been uh, communism's territory since ancient times. I feel like that was a really long premise <laughs> to get to the punchline, but okay. yes, okay, it works. It could have been worse. It could have been me trying to tell that joke. So tell is me about Southland Tales. Oh, gosh. So uh, The Rock is autistic for some reason. <laughs> and uh, that one guy, I think he was in American Pie. He time travels. Jason because Biggs? I think maybe <laughs> okay. that's him. Sarah Michelle Gellar's in it. There's a corporation. Was this an early 2000s movie? Something like that. It was about the guy who did Donnie Darko. Okay. And like he, that was so successful, the studio just gave him like carte blanche to. This is always a bad idea. It's it's always a bad idea. Like Zardoz was uh, the guy who did, I think, Deliverance or something. Yeah, Deliverance, I think. And then they the, the studio was like, hey, just do whatever. And then they came up with Zardoz, and Donnie Darko, Donnie Darko, the guy, came up with Southland Tales. And so there's a company that's harvesting the energy of the motion of the water, and it's called Liquid Karma. <laughs> And like it brings the end of the world or something. And this podcast reminded you of Southland Tales. Oh, because it's something about like harvesting the motion of the ocean. Okay. Wow. Okay. Maybe we should start a podcast on like terrible movies. Or just sci-fi in general and stuff. Movies unwatched. Mm -hmm. We watch the movies you don't want to watch for you. And then we can do like a... Mystery Science Theater 3000 type of Basically. commentary. Well, weren't there three three guys on that show? There's three of us. It's perfect. Loosely guys. It wasn't one of them like a praying mantis or something like that or like an alien. No, there were like, robots. Oh, they were all robots? Was, well, one was a human. Space ghost. Well, at least. You're thinking space ghost, okay. coast to coast. Okay, so I'm thinking of a different thing now. Yeah. Yes. Huh. I'm offended. <laughs> Clearly, you are uh, the, the the mantis guy, though. Okay. What's his name? Zoltar. Zoltar no, Zoltar it does sound. Right. It starts with a Z, though. I'm I pretty think. sure it's Zoltar. It, uh, anyway, 
we have we've lost the thread. We've fallen so far off the rails. The, I mean, yep. it's the first. You know, is this the first boss test of 2023? We did a top ten we filmed at the end of December that was sort of like the first of. And we published that on okay. the on the first or second. But this, this is kind of our first podcast of the year, yeah. so you know, I'm glad we're setting the setting ourselves up for the rest of the year. Yeah. yeah, I really hope our guests don't actually watch the podcast they're on so they don't see how we're Or at least trapped. turn off. The, the turn it off is, as soon as like as soon as our guest is gone, yeah. just turn it off and they don't <laughs> see the ending. That's probably good advice. Yeah. And if you're still watching this for some reason, my advice yeah. to you is to just not watch the last few minutes of the next podcast. Yeah, the slip and slide stuff was fun when we talked about that. Ah. Oh, yeah. I always wanted one of those as a kid. That wasn't going to happen. Oh, I had one. I slipped and fell <laughs> <laughs> myself. <laughs> so you used it once is what you're saying. Basically. <laughs> um, All right. Well. Yeah. And that is a true Southland tale. <laughs>